The voyage started just like any other. The cargo ship SS Cotopaxi is making another journey to Havana, Cuba to deliver coal. It's November 29, 1925. For Captain Meyer and his crew, leaving Charleston Port, South Carolina, it will be the last trip the ship ever makes. Its route ran through the Bermuda Triangle. Two days into the trip, the Cotopaxi sent out a distress signal. It had got caught up in a strong tropical storm and turned over on its side. The wind was very strong and there was powerful lightning as well. Rain gradually filled the ship's hold. Then there was a bright white flash and the ship disappeared without a trace. Later its wreckage was found in the Gobi Desert, which is in a completely different part of the world. All 32 crew members, including the captain, were missing. Of course, the part about the Gobi Desert is fictional. For one of his movies, Steven Spielberg came up with the idea that the ship was moved there by aliens. Still, in real life, the ship was never found, and its crew really did disappear. It was officially declared missing a month afterward, and nobody could find the wreck. It seems like a classic case of mysterious things going on in the Bermuda Triangle. But most mysteries are solved sooner or later. In 2020, the Cotopaxi was found. A man named Michael Barnett had moved to Florida to study shipwrecks off the coast. One wreck in particular really caught his attention. It was much larger than the others, and the locals called it the Bear Wreck. It was about 40 miles from St. Augustine in northern Florida. But no one had ever managed to identify the rusty hull. So Michael started to do some detective work. He measured the size of the shipwreck and started working through all the information he could find. He researched hundreds of old newspapers, leafed through insurance records, and looked at artifacts found on the wreck. After hundreds of hours of hard work, Michael was sure it was the Cotopaxi. But a few years before, there had been a rumor that the same ship had been found off the coast of Cuba. The Coast Guard found the wreck of a cargo ship about the same size that looked a lot like the one lost in 1925. Michael was sure they were wrong, so he teamed up with some science journalists and kept investigating. Soon, they discovered something that seemed to confirm Michael's belief. Divers found brass valves with the letters SV on them in the wreckage of the ship. Michael suggested these initials referred to Scott Valve Manufacturing Company. The headquarters of this company was in Michigan, not far from where the Cotopaxi had been built. The company had probably supplied parts for the Cotopaxi. So the puzzle seemed to be solved. The bear wreck was really the missing cargo ship. But Michael still needed to work out why the ship had sunk. Did something mysterious really happen to the Cotopaxi in the Bermuda Triangle? Later, Michael found the testimony of the ship's carpenter among some old papers. The carpenter claimed that the hatches covering the coal on the ship had been in a terrible condition before it sank. Repair work on the covers wasn't finished before the crew got the order to sail to Cuba. So if the hatch covers were still broken during the trip, water could have easily gotten on board. This water probably flooded the hole during the tropical storm. This was the real reason why the Cotopaxi went down. There was really nothing mysterious about it. It was just a mistake made by ordinary people. But this is just one example out of dozens, or even hundreds, where ships and planes have gone missing in the Bermuda Triangle. We still can't explain some of these incidents. It seems like there really is something weird going on there. One of these strange events happened in 1948. A passenger jet was headed for Miami from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It disappeared in the same area as the Cotopaxi. The 32 people on board vanished without a trace. The weather was clear throughout the flight, but experts think that when the plane was about 50 miles from the coast, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, a similar plane was found in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. But because no one could work out the registration, it was impossible to say for sure if it was the same one. Something even stranger occurred not long before, in 1945. Five planes went missing all at the same time. 
Some trainee pilots were practicing their navigation skills. But when they'd finished, it seems they couldn't find their way back home and disappeared. Many people assume they just ran out of fuel. This seems likely, but still, the circumstances were really strange. The trainees were being supervised by an experienced pilot who had 2,500 hours of flight time. He would never have let a group of newbie pilots get that far away from their base. Even now, people still debate what could have happened. Some insist the pilots ran into something supernatural out there in the Bermuda Triangle. But who knows? And here's another freaky thing that happened there which no expert has been able to explain. Time travel. In 1970, Bruce Gernon was flying a plane from Andros Island to the Florida coast. When he was at 11,500 feet, a giant cloud appeared in front of him. It kept getting bigger and bigger, and he had no choice but to fly through it. As soon as he did, the plane was surrounded by darkness. It was as if the day had turned to night in a split second. Suddenly, Bruce began to see white flashes of light around him. They were so bright that they lit up the entire sky. But they weren't lightning bolts, although he couldn't really explain what they were. The plane continued through the strange cloud for almost a half an hour. Bruce noticed that the cloud changed shape during this time. The space around the plane turned into a tunnel. Then the tunnel started narrowing. Bruce became really tense as he tried to cope with the plane's controls. All his instruments and navigation equipment were going crazy, and the electronics stopped working. Then, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. Just like in the movies, the plane escaped the closing cloud tunnel at the very last second. Everything was fine, but now Bruce found himself in some white fog. He had no idea where he was. Then he managed to contact ground control. He was shocked when he learned that his plane was already in the airspace above Miami. It seemed that something impossible had happened. Bruce was meant to cover a distance of about 250 miles during the flight. This usually took one and a half hours, but he had managed it in just 47 minutes, almost two times faster than normal. When Bruce landed, he went to check the amount of fuel left in the tank. It turned out he'd used up a lot less than the normal amount of fuel as well. Could there be a logical explanation for the time-traveling plane? Well, records show that a large number of sunspots were detected on the surface of the sun that day. And there was a strong solar wind. This could easily have made the electronics and devices on the plane go crazy. But what about the mysterious cloud? The Florida coast is a place where two large air currents meet. One has a high pressure and the other is a low pressure one. This causes a lot of storm clouds in the area. But people still debate how Bruce was able to cover the distance so quickly. Some people say that some kind of mysterious dark energy was involved. Others say it was a gravitational anomaly that curved space and time. Others think that Bruce is just a fraud. We still don't know the truth. So, is there really something supernatural about the Bermuda Triangle? Or is it all just coincidences and made-up stories? The truth is that no more planes and ships disappear in the Bermuda Triangle than anywhere else in the world.